Hello and welcome to the Tea Party Hardy channel. Today we're going to look at the difference between St. Patrick's Day in Ireland and St. Patrick's Day in America. My sources are the History Channel, a bunch of YouTube videos of people in Ireland, and some other sources on the web. So, here we go. The difference between St. Patrick's Day in America and Ireland. To begin with, in Ireland, St. Patrick's Day is a holiday that is a religious holiday. In America, St. Patrick's Day is a celebration of the Irish. We'll get into a little bit more detail of that on how that it unfolds as we go along. So let's start with the man himself, St. Patrick. St. Patrick was born somewhere on the English Isle. We don't know if it was in Wales or if it was in England or if it was in Scotland. So we don't have that done. But we do know he was born in the time during the Roman Empire occupation. And there is a good chance that St. Patrick and his family were Roman citizens. Uh, especially when you look at his original name, which was in in English, like not American English, but real English with that spelling that's like, how do you say that? And yet he went by the name Patricus, which lends yourself to think that now, obviously if it was going to be during the Roman Empire and it was an occupied territory, then you would have to have some kind of wealth and power to be considered a Roman citizen. Well, it just so happens that Patrick's parents were pretty well off. Okay, so uh, for those of you that don't know the backstory, when he was 16 years old, he got captured by Irish marauders, taken back to Ireland as a slave. The gig he got was being a shepherd, which is a really weird thing to have a slave do, to be alone with a bunch of animals, mostly the alone, because makes it really easy for them to escape. But anyways, he spent a lot of alone time, and it turns out Wi-Fi back in the 300s and 400s was really bad, so he just read the Bible instead. And he became very uh, in love with the scriptures and just a really religious, devout guy at that point. Eventually, he gets bored of watching the sheep, and he decides to go home. He walks 200 miles to the shoreline. That's a long walk, by the way. And then he goes back home, and he dedicates himself from that point on because of a revelation he had on the island. Oh, okay, they're both islands. A revelation on Ireland and a revelation over on the English Isle where he wanted to go back and convert the pagans into Christianity. So he studied theology uh, back home. And then sure enough, he did. He went back. Now, if you're under the concept that there were no there were no Christians on Ireland when he lived there, that would not be correct. There just weren't a lot, but there were definitely Christians there because somebody had come over earlier. And so there, there was a there was a missionary who had, who had preceded him. But he was obviously the most successful. So he went back and he did convert them. And now we get into the wacky stuff, which is, did he get rid of all the snakes in Ireland? Uh, well, he didn't have to because it's too cold up there, so there never were snakes in Ireland. So it's a metaphor for presumably getting rid of the pagans and taking them off the island. Nice to call them snakes. Okay, so another thing that I heard in one of the videos, which was kind of mind-blowing if you're an American, is th that St. Patrick's Day is the first, they call them bank holidays, the first holiday that you get off from school, get off from work, since New Year's Day. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's compare that to America. We have Martin Luther King Day the second week. <laughs> in America, you have to wait two whole weeks to get a day off as compared to waiting three and a half months. So you have New Year's off, you had Christmas off, you had Thanksgiving off, and then another two weeks. It's like, And it's like, oh, but then there's a big dry spell. Yeah, all the way to, depending on where you live, Lincoln's birthday, Washington's birthday, or at least President's Day. You're getting at least one or all three of those off in America. And so, yeah, I can see why it would be a very, very big deal to have St. Patrick's Day as a day off. If you've waited three and a half months, uh, again, Americans just, I don't think we ever go that long without a holiday. Okay, the other thing that they pointed out over and over and over, don't call it St. Patty's Day. They Apparently, that's a huge bee in their bonnet. As they pointed out over and over and over, patty is a girl's name, or it's what you do to a hamburger. It's a hamburger patty. It's not the saint. If you're going to do it, it's potty, not patty, and they can hear the difference. Boy, can they hear the difference. So if you want to be respectful to them, keep that in mind when you're there. Okay, so the other thing to know about St. Patrick is 
that he was never ordained as a saint. They just kind of said, you're a saint now because we like you and we're just going to do it that way. And think about it. Joan of Arc wasn't ordained a saint until uh, the 1920s. So it's, it's, you know, sometimes they just really drag their feet. So he's not really a saint in the traditional sense of what it is to be a saint. And you can see this picture here of St. Patrick in his beautiful green gown, which uh, implies that it's American because his actual color is blue. And then you have the clover. And I took this quiz this morning on Fox News of, do you know St. Patrick's Day? And since I did all this research on St. Patrick, I'm like, I should do okay on this. And then they said, does a clover have four leaves or three leaves? And I'm like, a clover? Or not a clover, a, a shamrock. And I'm like, a shamrock is just a clover. So I said, I, I tested it. I'm like, I'm going to say four just to see what they say. And I said, no. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'll go do some more research. Sometimes they get those quizzes wrong. It really makes me mad because there's no way to get a hold of the girl that writes them. So I'm like, mmm, I don't like that. Anyway, so it turns out that a shamrock is a generic name for a clover, but there's three other plants that haven't... So there's four in total um, that equals a shamrock, and we don't know which one... Or I should we? Forget we. The Irish haven't decided which one is really the true definition of a shamrock. So they sell you all the different ones, and one of the breeds, it's not even a clover, but it looks like a clover. But more importantly, it produces a lot of them that have four leaves, so they, they will market those as four-leaf clovers. Uh, okay, interesting. So... St. Patrick was not Irish. He was uh, from the English Isles. He might have been a Roman citizen. He was kidnapped at 16 by the Irish marauders, became a slave, uh, did the shepherding, and so forth and so on. Now, let's go to the next thing of different... Oh, and whoops, here's Ireland. So, in case you didn't know where Ireland was, it's, it's way over here. And correct me if I'm wrong, folks, but I believe the black spot is North Ireland. And from people that I know on YouTube that are from Northern Ireland, they're like, it's its own country... It's not Ireland. It's North Ireland. Canada's not part of the United States. It's not the same thing. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So, anyways, there it is. And So, we don't know if he was born here, here, or here. Somewhere over there. Okay, next up for the difference between American versus Irish. So, here are examples of Irish leprechauns. You can see they don't look at all like American leprechauns. And they have this Santa Claus-style hat. They're cobblers. Uh, it turns out that the leprechauns are the only f um, part of the family of pixies, fairies, gnomes, and leprechauns. Only one of them has an actual job, and it would be the leprechauns. The leprechauns are cobblers. Another thing about leprechaun. The leprechaun is not Gaelic. It's, it's Greek. And leprechaun means little man. So, all those little men in your house walking around. Yeah, they're leprechauns. True enough. Uh, so... Yeah, the big ears and the hammer. That's a hammer because like, it makes the point over and over that you will hear a leprechaun way more often than you'll see them. So apparently there's a bunch of thumping sounds that happen in Ireland randomly and they attribute it to the leprechauns. It's like, what's the deal with the thumping sounds? I don't know. They didn't say. So that's what they look like in Ireland. Now you've seen an Irish leprechaun. Now we'll see the American leprechaun. Yeah. The, the, okay, once again, American Ireland. They don't look that much alike at all oh, they're just short and now the green thing the green thing was added later because uh, in 18 and 1900s or no yeah 18 to 19th century yeah so 17 and 1800s 1700s and 1800s they, they used to wear red so they have been upgraded to green okay now this next part i got from history channel too if you look at the clothes that he's wearing with the jacket the vest the hat that has the band on it and the shillelagh over here, and the shamrock. Oh, no, not a shamrock. That's a four-leaf clover. Don't get it mixed up. You'll get it wrong on Fox News. So what they did is the cartoons of that they used in America to make fun of the Irish. And here's some examples I found. And uh, This one I got online. This one I got online. This one... It, no, actually, that one I did. That's a screenshot from the History Channel. And then this one with the funky rainbow colors is a screenshot, too. And... What they did, whoops, whoa, easy. So take a look at this guy. So there's the hat with the band, and you can see they just turned it green. And what I find really fascinating about this is what the Irish did is they took these derogatory cartoons and they turned them into this. And you hear so often nowadays that groups will take something derogatory and they'll own it to take away the power. The Irish actually did do that here because they took away the power of the derogatory cartoons and turned them into the leprechauns. But 
they did it more than anybody else in the sense that if you use leprechauns, people think it's cute. No one gets mad at you. So many of the other groups say, oh, we took that word and we, we took control of it so that it loses its power. Really? Then how come your group is the only group allowed to say it? Because if somebody else says it, you come after them with a vengeance. You didn't take away the power. You just shifted it to you to have vendetta and revenge. Whereas the Irish, no, they really did take it and they really did take away its evil power. People love leprechauns. In fact, this one gives way too many children breakfast. So there you go. So there's the Irish leprechauns versus the American leprechauns. And what else do we have as a difference? Oh, and here's another screenshot from... I don't know. This is from History Channel. I don't know if it was real or if it was staged or whatever, but it's hard to see because of the black and white, but this guy's actually wearing almost straight up the leprechaun suit that they turned it into. And they pointed out on the on that segment that these clothes that they're wearing, that they came over to America during the potato famine, that they were already 40 years hand-me-downs. So they were uh, another reason to that they were made fun of. I don't want to say that they should be made fun of it, but they were. I don't, I don't think you should make fun of people. The rainbows! Okay, so rainbows and the pot of gold. The pot of gold has some really interesting things. Oh, there's a rainbow in the dark. Uh, star chart that you can get from that. Okay, here's the clovers. Uh, the four-leaf clover. Okay, uh, to the rainbows and the pot of gold. The way that works is, this is interesting. In one of the versions, the reason that where the pot of gold comes from is that when the, the Danish, the Denmarkians, the Danish... Isn't a Danish something you eat for breakfast? Anyways, the people from Denmark, when they came over, they would hide their gold in Ireland in the caves, and then, according to this version of the folklore, the leprechauns just stole it. <laughs> so, that's where the gold comes from. Uh, it's been hijacked. And then if you capture a leprechaun and you hold him, you can get three wishes as long as you're looking at him, but they will do everything they can to make you stop looking at them. And didn't mention if blinking counts, but I bet it would. Uh, anyways, once you take your your eyes off them, whoosh, they're gone. And so uh, there goes your chance at the big fortune. But don't forget, if you do get the money, if you actually do get the gold, when you go to spend it, it turns into a leaf or it turns into to soil or crumbs. So it's all tricks anyways. Not to be confused with lucky charms. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so there's that. And so what else do we have between... Oh, now, back to America. Uh, in the the difference between St. Patrick's Day in America versus Ireland. It's not just the leprechauns that are different. Look at it like this. In Ireland, you've got the religious stuff going on where they wake up and they go to church. And then they either go to picnics or they go to the parades. Keeping in mind... Okay, now this is where you get into the really big differences. When the Irish immigrants came to America... And they started celebrating St. Patrick's Day here. They changed it from a religious holiday to celebrating Irish. And to this day, when you celebrate St. Patrick's Day in America, they have t-shirts that say, Kiss me, I'm Irish. It doesn't say, Kiss me because I like St. Patrick. There's, it's When you hear Irish, excuse me, when you hear St. Patrick's Day songs in America. They have nothing to do with the Catholic Church. They have nothing to do with St. Patrick. They have nothing to do with Irish marauders. They're just Irish songs. When we talk about movies we're going to watch for St. Patrick's Day, like Darby O'Gill and the Little People, which I have queued up behind this screen right now, and um, The Quiet Man with John Wayne. These are just movies about Ireland. It has nothing at all to do with St. Patrick. Nothing. Because in America, St. Patrick's Day is a celebration of Ireland. And in Ireland, St. Patrick's Day is a celebration of St. Patrick. So the immigrants did that. And then they did it so good here that most of the traditions that we do in America, they incorporated into Ireland back home. So it went backwards. The dying of the Green River, I don't know if they do that in Ireland, but they do that in Chicago. Oh, when they originally did it, it would last for up to two weeks. It's like, oh, dude, that's a little funky. Now they've got it down to lasting for a few hours. A little bit more appropriate. The first parade was actually done by the Spanish in America for St. Patrick's Day. And it was way back in the, uh, I don't want to give you the wrong date, but it was like before the 1700s. And then, then you had the one in Boston. And then you had the one in New York, and other cities have adopted it. So eventually Ireland goes, in the 1930s, they're like, you know, we should probably do a parade too? So they did. So they copied it. 
So a lot of this stuff goes backwards and forwards. The other thing that the, <laughs> that the Irish are like, what is this corned beef and hash thing you're talking about? We don't, we don't, what is that? Once again, that's American because when they were in the ghettos in New York, because they were poor, because no Irish need apply here, the, the Jews were also poor and they lived here and they lived in the same area. And so the Jews said, hey, you guys want meat? Here's some meat. You can have some corned beef and hash. And they're like, well, I guess it's better than nothing. But in Ireland, their traditional St. Patrick's Day meal is bacon and cabbage and mashed potatoes. And I seen them serving it on one of the videos. Wow, it looks good. It looks really, really good. So kudos to the person that put that together, at least on that video shot. It's like, I wouldn't mind trying that at all. So uh, again, that's one of the big differences. And I think that's about all the major differences. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, and by the way, there is an actual leprechaun museum in Ireland, and their website is online if you want to check it out. So that's kind of fun. As far as the leprechauns go, the, some of the people in Ireland that are in politics are like, oh, this makes us look stupid, and it's like, stop doing it. And the other people are like, shut your ply hole. It gets tourists over here, and they're cute. Leave it alone. But you would be confused as an American if you go over there and you see this type of leprechaun right here instead of the Lucky Charms version because they, it's, yeah, it's the difference. So we hope you enjoyed that. It's a, we hope you enjoyed that. And I might bring more of these to you here and there. Um, I'm a big one on the, on, on holidays and I do a lot of research on holidays. I'm supposed to put them on my, on my, I have a website, or not a website, but a, a, I have a YouTube channel for my history stuff, but for those of you guys that are YouTubers, you know Google changed the rules not too long ago that in order to get into your account, you have to give up your phone number, and I've got six YouTube channels, and I don't want to give them my phone number for all six, and so I'm putting it here instead. So I hope you like it, and if you want more holiday stuff, let me know, because I have one. I have them for all the holidays in February, all seven holidays in February, and then I also have them for 4th of July, duh, Tea Party Hardy channel. Um, and then Christmas, I have stuff. I, I have a bunch of them, mostly for February because there's just so darn many holidays in February from Groundhog Day all the way to uh, Leap Day. So I have uh, full research on each one of those. Anyways, we thank you for watching if you like this. Um, and if you made it this far, oh, cool all the way. I know it's a little bit different from this channel, but not completely different because I do have one on here that's a half an hour long of the Pilgrims and the and stop blaming the pilgrims for what the Puritans did. And you can watch a whole half an hour video on that one if you want and, and get the lowdown on that with, once again, a lot of research done into it. Oh, my final thanks, and I will see you sometime in the future. And by the way, happy St. Paddy's Day to you.